Here's uh, a demonstration of what I've done. This is my Battle of the Bulge scenario for computerized Europa. Uh, keep in mind a couple things. First of all, it's very much a limited intelligence game, but right now I have developer mode turned on, so we'll see a lot of information, in including some um, data diagnostics that will never be visible to either player. Um, players only get to see things according to what the game situation is. So right now, for example, we start out in the initial phase of the Axis surprise turn, and the Axis player would not even be able to see the fact that there are some allied units behind the lines here. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that we are uh, currently in verbose mode. In verbose mode, players get helpful alert messages about situations that arise during the game and they can be useful especially when figuring out how to play this thing but on the other hand they can get kind of tiresome in the long run so players have the ability to turn off verbose mode whenever they want so some examples of things that are going on um we nothing is really happening right now we're in the initial phase so this is basically just to say okay let's start the game i'm going to click here and this gets us into rolling for weather it's winter weather um, now we're in the movement phase of the axis surprise turn we can do all kinds of things here uh, let's for example let's just demonstrate that these headquarters markers are just decorative just to show that there are uh, one or more units in each hex that has a headquarters marker you can do whatever you want with your headquarters markers. For example, I've used static here for, for no particular reason. Uh, notice that when I mouse over this, I get information about what's going on in that hex. Here I can see this. But again, keep in mind that this is developer mode. So I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that would not be shown to the players. If I do this in developer mode, I can see this information about the allied contents of that hex, whereas the German player would, wouldn't see that at all. Um, getting back to the headquarters units, so here, for example, I could say, you know, I, I don't like that 9th Infantry, let's redesignate that, and I can do anything I want. Uh, maybe I'll pick this one over here, just for the heck of it. And, th and that can be for purely decorative reasons, or it can be um, to help the player Remember, oh yeah, right, if I've got uh, a Panzer Grenadier marker there, that means I have the following stuff in there. Or it can be done to confuse the other player. If you had your Panzers under one headquarters, um, switch to different headquarters, and maybe they'll forget where they saw your Panzers, that kind of thing. Um, so you can merge headquarters, you can transfer units from one headquarters to another, you can add headquarters, um, you can remove empty headquarters, you can do all those kinds of things. Um, you can find stuff. For example, you often want to know where are my combat motorized divisions. And so this tells you where they are. Uh, maybe you want to know where your engineers are. And this will show you where your engineers are. And let's go in. Uh, I think if we go up here, oh, we've got a construction brigade here. And let's say um, we want to go in and deal with some infrastructure. So infrastructure is for construction demolition and repair. Now none of that stuff is allowed in the surprise turn, but um, when it is allowed in a regular turn, you could go in, for example, and, and here you would click and say, I, will, I want to start building a fort in this hex. And the system would keep track of that, and at the appropriate time, uh, unless something happens in the meantime to prevent it, at the appropriate time the headquarters will pop up in that hex. Let's go back to movement here. So, um, so this is kind of goofy, um, and, and, and since this is not, I, I'm, I'm not going to make smart moves here. I would be relieved of my command if I tried to do these commands, tried to uh, issue these orders to my troops. But I'm going to say, I'm going to take this stack here. It's now ready for movement, and I can move everybody, or I could just pick the ones that I want to move. Um, and I'm going to say, let's get the heck out of Dodge, and let's go back here. This is a alert this is because we're in verbose mode telling me that not everybody can go that far 
headquarters. So we've dropped off some people, and those people have a new headquarters unit there, and it picked randomly. It picked a, a Calvary headquarters. It doesn't mean anything, and we can change that if we want to. And we'll keep moving along here. And now um, we'll close that, and we'll go here. And now it says no unit has sufficient MP. So you can see we, we had to drop off some units along the way because they couldn't move as far. And then that's the end of the line. Um, we could keep clicking if we wanted, but it wouldn't do us any good. No, nothing would happen. So we'll stop the movement there. Now I can look at this and I can say, oh, you know, this motorized flak regiment that got all the way out here. Oh, yeah, I didn't really want to do that. I want to cancel his move. So boom, he runs back to his starting point and has all his MPs again. Uh, so we'll click there. We'll go to this one. And these guys, uh, notice they have expended all their movement points to get where they wanted to go. And I could say, well, maybe I want, um, I think I'll cancel his move also. Um, so I'll cancel that. And he goes back, but these guys stayed behind. And let's just say that I said, you know, that was really too far. I just want to go back one. So it puts them in here with the other guy. And I'll say, you know, let's let's merge those into one headquarters there. That was optional. But, you know, by, by the end of the turn, if you don't merge everybody, the system is going to merge everybody. There will, at the end of a turn, be only one headquarters in any given hex. And then show all your units. All right, so that, that's movement. Let's do that. Oh, I was going to say um, search, by the way. So you can find things like combat motorized divisions and engineers and forts. You know, you can find that stuff easily. Those are the kinds of things that you often need to know. You can also do a, a regular kind of, of search. Type in anything that you want and say, oh, look, here, Panzer Lair Division must be in this hex. So it helps you to find things when it's scattered out on the map. Um, let's go, let's end the movement phase. And again, that wasn't very smart movement. Um, but I'll, I'm also now going to do some not very smart attacks. I'm not really putting people into position. Let's say I want to attack this hex here. And although now in developer mode, I can look and see what's in there, uh, I would not actually be able to do that as the German player at this point. I really don't know what's in that hex unless the game has been going along and I've been paying close attention to where units are, then I'm, I'll probably have a better idea. Or if I've started next to them, then you know, I'll have some indication, that sort of thing. All right, let's attack with these two. And I could say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I don't want to do that. I changed my mind. I'll, I'll call that off. But actually, I really will do it. So I'll go in here. Now when I say calculate combat, and this is it. Now, now I'm committed. I've got to make the attack. Even when this information comes up, uh, it looks like it's going to be really bad. On the other hand, remember, I'm seeing developer information. Neither player will ever see this much information about what's happening. They'll see a little bit of it um, for their own side. Um, I'm, I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that I need for diagnostic data. So you can see the headquarters, which units are in which headquarters, what the strength of each unit is. Um, do they have armor effects? Do they have engineers? Do they have any aircraft? Uh, what's their supply status? All that kind of stuff is here. Uh, the system can figure out all those things. Uh, air support. Now, uh, in this particular scenario, the Allies are not allowed to have defensive air support during the surprise turn. The Germans have a little bit of air support, and we'll just we'll throw it all in to this battle. Now, who's going to attack over here? Um, you know, by default, everybody's going to attack, but for each headquarters, they could say, oh, I don't really want them to attack. That, that'd be kind of silly, because I picked the guys in that hex to attack, so I'll say all of them, but, but just for the heck of it, for no good reason, bad generalship, I'm going to leave the first SS out of the attack, so they're, they're not going to participate. Now, up here, I have checked off this box so that I can see blow by blow exactly what's going on to calculate and resolve the combat, keeping in mind that the system knows about weather, terrain, supply, support, armor effects, engineers, air support, anti-aircraft. It knows about all that stuff. 
It's going to figure it all out. It's going to calculate everything. Um, in this case, I want to see it. I want to see what all that data is. Eventually, I might get tired of that and say, no, never mind. Just show me what happened. I don't, I don't need to see how this sausage was made. So we're ready to go here. We've got uh, most most people are attacking. You know, this really this guy would probably need to be attacking too. But I'm going to resolve this combat and I'm going to look over here. And now we have exactly what's going on. And we can see the diagnostics are attacking this hex. Time and date stamp. That's just for me to keep track of stuff. Um, again, this is this is giving away all kinds of information. But it's it's just basically for diagnostic purposes. Uh, some of this would not be showing up when players are looking at it, but as the developer, I can see everything here. All right, so here's defending in the rough hex. We have these two units attacking. There's a headquarters, and this hex with a clear hex side has these units, but for some reason, that unit was not selected to participate in the attack. Um, the other headquarters in the other hex, also a clear hex side, it had all of these units. So here are the defender raw totals. Here are the attacker raw totals of everything. Uh, rough terrain, we're going to get a minus one for that. Uh, there's no use for engineers there. So even if we had a bunch of engineers, it doesn't do any good. Engineers don't help you attacking into rough terrain. Now there's no air-to-air -air combat because we only have defensive air support. Now if we also, or rather we only have offensive air support. If we had both defensive and offensive, that means that there would be air-to-air -air combat. Players don't get involved in making any decisions in that. Just the simple fact that both players have committed uh, air support to the hex means that the system is now going to go in and look at it and it's going to figure out, okay, here's what's going on here and we're going to resolve that combat and um, air support can be shot down, it can be turned back, or it can get through. And the system is going to handle all that, but in this case, we have not. So we move on to anti-aircraft resolution. Again, it knows um, how much AA each side has versus whether or not there's any air support for the other side. And it does the firing and it figures out what's going on. So there's no AA fire here. The defensive air support factors are always halved. There is none stays at zero. Offensive air support was halved by weather conditions from 10 to 5. And uh, now we begin calculating some ground combat stuff now that we'll, we'll save those numbers there. So here are the raw odds of the ground plus air to ground plus air. 94 to 11 makes the basic odds here because we always see if we can shift so in this case, there's going to be a, a 5 out of 10 chance that this would go from an 8 to 1 to a 9 to 1. So you really don't have to worry about factor fiddling here. There's also the un uncertainty mode, which I think is turned off right now. Uncertainty mode means you don't even know the exact strength of your own units. You might think you know, but once you actually get into combat, the system is going to figure out if they are a little bit weaker, a little bit stronger, or, or they really are what you think that their attack and defense factors are. So you, you don't have to spend nearly as much time trying to see, oh, can I get an exact three to one? Oh, I gotta find one more factor from some place to turn this into a four to one attack. Um, no, there's no sense in doing that. The, the system is handling all this stuff behind the scenes and it's gonna give you the best thing it can give you. So we got um, the, we made the die roll, uh, um, the odds here, eight to five. Oh, we didn't make the die roll. And the reduced to seven to one though, because that's as high as the odds table goes. The die roll is five. Now based on that, we look uh, armor effects. So the attacker has a, a, a plus three, defender has nothing. Um, so the differ differential is three, but there is a ceiling in snow winter weather that the maximum is the plus one. So the total armor effects is a plus one. So we modify the five to a six. Engineers don't do anything in this terrain. So even if you had engineers, it's a zero. So it stays a six. Terrain and or fortification die mod <clears throat> is a minus one. So it takes us back to a five. Winter weather die mod minus one. So uh, that takes us to a four. So the final fully modified die roll is a four in this case which is DE.
So we are eliminating or reducing to casual all defending units, including any non-participating units in the hex. Non-participating units, it could be overstacked units who happen to be sitting in that hex, couldn't contribute to the defense, but they're subject to the results of, of whatever happens to the defenders there. So we see the 106 Infantry Division is reduced to cadre. Artillery Brigade is completely eliminated. Surviving units in the defender hex need to retreat. So is there a retreat? True, yes, there is. Can the attacker advance? True, yes, the attacker can, can advance. So what we just saw there is all the nitty gritty, every, everything that happened, because we checked that box off. Whether we want to see that or not, that, that's up to us. It's kind of cool to look at it for a while, then it gets kind of tiresome perhaps. And right here, we see all the time, we see just what we actually need to know. The odds are 7 to 1. We rolled 5. They got modified to 4. The results were defender eliminated. Somebody's got a retreat, so let's click here to conduct the retreat. And when we look at this, we can see here's our unit that was attacked. And it just so happens that in this case, the unit is surrounded by enemy units and or their zones of control. So there's really no place to go, but we'll say, hey, let, let's retreat up to here. And it's going to tell us now in verbose mode, it's eliminated due to the enemy zone of control. If it's non-verbose mode, it won't bother to tell you that. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Um, now who's going to advance? Well, all these people were in the attack, except this guy didn't attack, so he's not available. He can't, he can't get in and do the advance. And let's just say we don't want anybody in the second corps to go in, but we'll take everybody in the third SS Panzer Corps. We'll conduct the advance. Notice it's going to leave the first SS out. So when we do this, here the first SS stayed behind because he couldn't advance and randomly picked that cavalry headquarters, uh, which, which doesn't matter. You can swap that out if you don't like the cavalry headquarters. And everybody else who did advance is under the new headquarters in that hex. Now, it's still the combat phase. Let's attack somebody else. So what happens if we say I want to attack this guy and I want to attack with these guys? Well, now this is not in verbose mode. This is an actual warning saying, hey, sucker, you can't do this. These guys have already attacked. There's nobody in that hex who can do it. So, you know, pick something else. Okay, I'll pick a different hex here. Um, anyway, so then I can go on and continue to make as many attacks as I want. Uh, I can eventually, in the phase, it would normally go to exploitation, but because this was the surprise turn, the surprise turn is now over. And we come to game turn one, axis player turn, initial phase, winter weather, because we already rolled for the weather. And in this particular scenario, in the bulk scenario, uh, the reinforcements are placed on the map automatically and more or less where they should go. So this turn, the German player is getting all those reinforcements and they are going under this headquarters and to this hex right now. In the other scenarios, players have more control and they can decide, oh, I want to put this, this reinforcement in this hex and this reinforcement in this hex. I just did a little bit differently in this scenario. So we will end the initial phase with those reinforcements arriving. It's now supply phase. There's nobody out of supply. Otherwise, they would be marked on here. So we'll just uh, complete that. Also, it's going to automatically roll for deletion. Uh, for elimination of units that are out of supply uh, for too long, but we'll do that. And now we're back to the movement phase. So that's an example, a demonstration, basically, of the way things work in the game. Uh, this is the second scenario that I've put together. The uh, the OBs are pretty good. They're not they're not perfect. The uh, divisional level stuff is, is really good. The non-divisional stuff is, is a little shakier, except right in the actual Ardennes front where the data is available. The non-div stuff is a little shakier up in the Netherlands and so forth, but still pretty good. Uh, the third one is uh, Normandy that I'm working on right now, and then I have plans for some more to do later. I probably have about uh, six or eight of these little scenarios that I'll be able to play. Anyway, that's it. So I'm going to stop this right now.